And that's what really sanctification is. It's dying a slow mm-hmm. death to you and your wants yeah. and your wills and your and your desires and your hopes and your dreams and saying a steady yes every single day mm-hmm. to what God wants. So, you know, that I think that's where we are and that's where everybody is. That's the ans- answer to all is that Mm -hmm. you have these fears you have because of what you've seen, because of sin, because of you Mm -hmm. were raped because of an awful relationship. But at the same time, we have all this built up, but we're not pursuing our sanctification. We're not pursuing our dying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're trying to live without trying to die. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Hello friends, today we're going to have some fun with a girlfriend of mine who is brilliant and beautiful. She has an amazing story and a powerful voice that will leave you feeling inspired. Let's talk about love, self-worth, soul care, and marriage in a world that seems to be self-absorbed and afraid of commitment. Hope Carpenter, it's always a joy and an honor to have you with us on Inside Voice. We love you and I'm so glad you're here. Brenda, you know I love you. Uh, when we don't get to see each other in our certain cities, we just do a TV show together, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth. <laughs> you Thank know, you. And, you know, I think we should tell everybody really about this amazing podcast that you and Ron have been doing <laughs> and it's getting, I mean, you are garnering the attention of so many folks out there. I mean, you pretty much talk about everything, don't you? Oh yeah, we sure do. Uh, if that's why it's called Ron and Hope Unfiltered, Real, Raw and Relevant. We, um, we wanted to kind of, you know, step out of the pulpit and talk Mm. to people about real life things, things that just frustrate us, things that get, you know, try to get us out of our peace, child rearing, (laughs) marriage, menopause, sex, all the things. (laughs) So we go there and uh, it really has been so much fun, Brenda, because, you know, it's almost like we just turned the record button on us just talking. And that's really Uh what we do. We just have these conversations and it's been a lot of Mm. fun. I love that because, you know, I think that we're really in a place where uh, so many people have really fallen away from the church even. And it's the younger generation, those Gen Zers that they're just kind of like, y'all are not speaking my language. You're not talking anything. Uh, you know, they want authenticity from us and, and they want to talk about real issues. They really want yeah. answers. And, <clears throat> you know, the millennial generation as well, they're truth seekers, but you know, we're really kind of fragmented right now. So I think what you're doing is brilliant. And the fact that you're addressing even controversial issues. And so, you know, I just really want to have some fun conversation with you today because um, you know, especially for girls, but you know, young men too, and, and women, <clears throat> there are some issues that we really carry around a lot of baggage in self-protection mode, uh, whether we're inside or outside of the church. I mean, this is kind of human nature to self-protect and to be non-committal. We live in a very narcissistic type of culture. A lot of those mindsets, you know, kind of like to invade us, you know, when we're self-protecting, when we're self-absorbed. And you're somebody that's really been kind of on both sides of that coin. You have seen behind the curtain of all the lies, so to speak. You know, you you took the, the road to the wizard. You found out that what was behind the curtain was just a bunch of moving parts that weren't yeah. real. And so I really want you to speak into some of the fears that um, a lot of our young people are having having today, and really even people from, from our generation who are have experienced fragmentation and brokenness yeah. in their relationships. You know, just <clears throat> talking to my own kids, and they're 28, mm-hmm. 26, 24, we have very real conversations with our children. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't hide anything from them. And if people have watched our podcast 
the the Carpenter Family podcast. Right. It has the largest reviews on any podcast. And oh. it was asking our kids, you know, what's it like growing up in the Carpenter house? What was it like growing up in a house with your dad as the, you know, mega mm. preacher in a small town and the ridicule they got and, you know, their views of church and how we failed them. I mean, we asked these questions and I was almost pausing to breathe like, oh, God, <laughs> what are they going to tell? <laughs> because we you. told them before the podcast, we were like, tell the truth. Yeah. Don't kill us yeah. too bad. Kill us softly, right. <laughs> but tell the truth. And um, I think these this new generation, and especially mm. in the church, because, you know, that's what I know the most. Yeah. But like you said, it is humanity. I think they saw us in the church at a time where we were trained and we were groomed to never tell mm. the truth to put your right. best foot forward show everybody you know slap your smile on and mm. you've been might be fighting in the car but when you get to church you got to be on and so we trained them to be fake and they saw it and they hated it and so that's why they really won't real today you know they're like oh i mm -hmm. saw them be fake and then i saw them fall apart so i don't want a part, any part right. of that and yeah. so I think that's why they can look at us sideways and they can smell a rat in any room. You know, they mm. know when people are fake. They know when people are real. And I appreciate that. I listen to my mm -hmm. kids. I listen to my in-laws. They don't always, mm. uh, my in-law kids, they don't always tell me everything I want to hear. And it's very challenging. It's extremely challenging um, because there's no fluff with them. And... Mm -hmm. Uh, it just is what it is. So I appreciate that side of this generation. Um, but I don't think that this generation has the work ethic we had. You know, we didn't have yeah. all of the fun stuff. We didn't have all the fluff. We didn't mm -hmm. have the Internet. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have marketing tools and fancy schmancy, all these ways to grow a church. You know, we just had to pick up the phone that was on the cord and cook <laughs> while we were talking to a prospective church person and all rock right. a baby at the same time. You know, <laughs> I'm not trying to act like my grandparents did. You know, I had to walk to right. school yes. with no shoes on. <laughs> And uh, in the snow, I'm not trying to be like that, but it is yeah. a different day. And I don't think that they relish mm -hmm. and treasure mm -hmm. or even want <laughs> the same work ethic we had mm -hmm. because they're looking at it saying, why do we have to? You know, we don't need, mm -hmm. you know, we do have all this for a reason. And um, yeah. so I just so think maybe it's a, a, low, a learning yeah. curve. Yeah. A learning curve uh -huh. for them and us and in embracing each other's uh, wisdom and opinion. And I think it, that falls on us, you know, to be open to say, you know, sh talk to me, teach, teach mm -hmm. me where you're coming from. Talk to me. Where are you struggling? How did we fail you? And listen. So I just That's think good. we are in a challenging day. But yes, I, I did take that crazy road. Um, down the I want to do it my way road for a while found out it yeah. didn't work and so I have learned a lot Brenda I have yes. and um, I've given the rest of my life to try to mm -hmm. share you know the things the the thing the holes in the road the places that I missed it um, yeah. but at the same yeah. time continue to be a learner a lifelong learner that's so good. So important. And I think we model that. We can model that for our kids and for those generations that, that have come after us. You know, even though it is they've been disillusioned and they've seen our failures, um, they're also witnessing us getting honest and coming to the table vulnerable and being willing to listen. And there, there is a basic, while technology has changed, there is the, the basic needs of humanity is still the same. Yeah, we absolutely. were all created for relationship with, with God, with ourselves and with one another. Yeah. And we're very fragmented. And so, you know, there are some things that we can bring some wisdom, like you said, that comes from um, a, a seasoned life of yeah. walking with Christ, being honest with Christ, 
in our failures. I think really as we kind of bump into our own humanity and, and fail miserably, it's really kind of our gift, don't you think, to be able to say, you know what, I'm just going to get honest and raw with God and I'm going to let him get down into the stuff that maybe I haven't been paying attention to. Yeah. Right. I agree. I agree. And um, like I said, I've given my life now mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. not glorifying the, the tough days and the sin and the ways mm-hmm. I miss the mark, but trying to help somebody else to open their eyes to to the red flags, to, you know, where where are you on your journey? Where are you on your path? Good. Because we all are on the on the journey. If we're mm-hmm. uh, Christians, we're on a journey to become more like Jesus. And I always Mm -hmm. say, but we're all on different mile markers. You know, some of us have been on the road a lot longer than others. So we should look more like Jesus than the ones who just Mm -hmm. got saved. So I'm just trying to be honest, to uh, share my story and just give some hope and encouragement that even if it is bad, you don't have to live there. It's not a life sentence and it can be right. That's awesome. Okay, so let's talk about um, motives then. And uh, why do we make some of the decisions that we do, uh, the bad choices that we make? Why do we, or good, uh, why do we um, even have fears that prevent us from fulfilling some of those relational destinies that we have? Um, You know, I think soul issues and some of those wounds have really left their mark. So take us to that place where, you know, there's a, there's young girls out there who desperately want to be loved, but they're not necessarily looking for the traditional sense of love in, in the sense of like a, a committed marriage relationship. They're just looking to be loved. And in that, in so doing, might be making the mistake of being used. Yeah, it happens all the time, you know, because we're broken. Bottom line, Mm -hmm. um, we're broken people and we're broken because of sin. You know, with the decline and the decay is because of sin. And Mm -hmm. um, somebody asked me the other day to do a podcast on why people cheat. People think, well, she's cheating on her husband because the sex is better out here or she's cheating on her husband because her husband's not a good husband. And I'm like, no, 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 no. People cheat because they're broken. Right. Bottom line. People lie because they're broken. People have money issues and character issues and whatever. All of our issues are because we're broken and we're broken because of sin. And what we Mm -hmm. did and did not get in childhood. um, And that's because we're broken (laughs) and because of because Mm -hmm. our parents were broken because of sin. It's just a a cycle. You know, we're broken people. And so until we get on this journey of really digging deep and and again, Brenda, I've told you and I've talked about this a hundred times. Probably the church has done a terrible job at explaining what the process of sanctification is. We tell people, mm-hmm. okay, now come down here and get saved and everything's going <laughs> to yeah. be made new. Everything's yeah. going to be different. The on- No, that's not true. The only thing that's mm-hmm. different is your spirit man woke up. Right. Your body mm-hmm. can still do the same thing. Your soul yeah. man still Have remembers. And it it yeah. still thinks. It still can do this exact same thing. So it is a process now of taking off the old, putting on the new, crucifying our will, crucifying my desires, my wants, and realizing my life is not my own. And how many of us Christians are still fighting for our life to be our own? None of us want to die. And that's what really sanctification is. It's dying a Mm -hmm. slow death to you and your wants yeah. and your wills and your and your desires and your hopes and your dreams and saying a steady yes every single day mm-hmm. to what God wants. So, you know, that I think that's where we are and that's where everybody is. That's the ans- answer to all is that mm-hmm. you have these fears you have because of what you've seen, because of sin, because of you mm-hmm. were raped, because of an awful relationship. But at the same time, we have all this built up, but we're not pursuing 
our sanctification. We're not pursuing our dying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're trying to live without trying to die. Right. Well, and, and it's it, the, the parable of, you know, you can't find your life until you've until you lost your it. life. Right. And it's really like the seed that goes into the ground. It first has to die. It's really this is a principle that God set into motion <clears throat> as that seed splits apart and dies. Life comes from yeah. it. I mean, it it's produces. his life in us that produces life and and then fruit. But, you know, to the person who's listening that has absolutely no idea what sanctification is or, you know, what, uh, what it, why would we have to, uh, deny ourselves? Because the world tells us you, and culture you tells us, you know, Hey, <laughs> yeah, you, you write your own truth. It's all about you. And, uh, you know, make sure you're happy. Nobody else matters. Yeah. And so th there's this real, uh, disjointed, uh, kind of, thing, you know, amongst humanity and everybody's just fight, fighting and fending for themselves. Yeah. But explain that. Why would I be motivated? I mean, I know why, because I've walked through this and, and, but why would I be motivated to want to lay down my life so that Christ could teach me who I actually am in him? Where, where's my, where do I find that to be my hope? Yeah. I think the church again, I'm just, I'm just giving the church a spanking today and I'm in the church, but the church has done a <laughs> terrible job because we stand up and say, God wants you to be happy. He, and he does. But the whole twist in the story is he does want you to be happy, but you can only be happy when you do it his way. You know, it's mm -hmm. not, he just wants you to be happy. So go off and pursue your happiness and, and sanctification. That's that big church word. And that is just, you know, becoming more like Jesus, getting cleaner, mm -hmm. getting cleaner. And the Bible says we only get clean through the washing of the word. So if we have a sin problem, we've got a lack of word problem. So we're not shows that we're not pursuing him and in mm -hmm. the word and letting it change us. Uh, we just, that's another principle of us old, old women and us old people who we heard <laughs> it all the time, but you know, church yeah. doesn't preach that anymore. But the truth is the word is life. It is. And if we're not going to the source, it is our source. He is our source. Jesus is the word in the flesh. And so if we're not going to our source, then we're not alive. We're, we're going to decay on the inside. We're going to be, we're going to manifest anxieties and, and all the, the, the questions of life that drive us bananas and all of our motivations are going to be centered around fixing ourselves, but we're not going to be able to do that ourselves. And so what you're talking about is connecting back to our creator, mm -hmm. connecting back to our father. And there's so many people I think that are also really dealing with wounds of their natural fathers. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I had them, you've had wounds from your parents. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that will oftentimes kind of twist our identity. And so, you know, we're, what we're talking about really is we're not shaming anybody. We're just saying, let's listen. Mm -hmm. Life is a journey yeah. and Jesus is standing there on your horizon. It doesn't matter how far you have gone away from him or how deep your pit is. It doesn't matter what you've done. He is there calling to you and with his arms stretched wide open, he's fighting for you and he loves you and he wants you to know him so that you can have life and you can have joy and really ultimately Ultimately, I think that's where happiness then comes from. But I think we're really um, kind of fixed on happiness first. We don't understand that there's some inner, inner workings and, you know, uh, some stuff going on <clears throat> under the surface that we have to pay attention to first. And happiness can of, oftentimes be equivocated with, say, materialism or being, you know, empowered and, and the center of attention. So, you know, how do we find happiness uh, when life hands us limits? Yeah. I mean, the last two years, we have globally experienced things yeah. that have been very difficult. And 
some people are depressed from yep. it. Some people are, they're finding that their fears have been magnified. Businesses have closed. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are just living on that edge of, oh my goodness, you know, what if everything crumbles and, yeah. and our economy is being shaken a bit. So, you know, how do we find happiness when life is handing us hard things. Yeah, well, I think the, the key to that is knowing that ha happiness comes from the word happenings. Mm. And that tells you right there, you're not always going to be happy. Everything in life, you know, the happenings in our life are not always pleasant and positive. You know, you just wake yeah. up some days and you got bad. Some days you just wake up and it's bill paying day. Some days you wake up and it's <laughs> laundry day. And, you know, <laughs> some days you wake up and you don't feel well and it's hot flash day. And, you know, <laughs> there's just some days that, you know, are yeah. the best days. And the Bible yeah. even says for the believer in this world, you will have tribulation. Mm -hmm. You're going to have it. But fear not. Fear not. Mm -hmm. I've already overcome the world. So that's why we are supposed to, as a Christian, have peace that passes our happenings, our understanding, that what we see, feel, and think. So I've got my joy. I've got my peace. And it's rooted in no matter what I'm going through today. No matter if it is bill day and I don't have enough money in the bank to pay these bills or no matter what the doctor's report says or no matter if I'm living with him over there with his big belly and he's scratching his feet and, I, you know, I'm just not turned on at all. You know, no matter what my happening is that's yeah. causing me unhappiness, yeah. I still know that God's got me. And that tomorrow's a mm -hmm. new day and that it couldn't get better. And I, and there's a lot of things that I can do to change my situation and my circumstance. Mm -hmm. So the concept is really that happiness and joy are really two different things. Yes. And so I think maybe we have in, in being so consumed with ha finding happiness, we're forgetting about joy and it's the joy of the Lord. The scripture says that is our strength. strength. So how do we um, encourage the younger generations to be strong and to find their joy, not strengthen yourself, not strengthen just your determination. That's determination is good. Ambition can be good, but it can also take you places that you shouldn't go. Yeah. And I think if we go back to the place of joy, like you're talking about where we find joy in tribulation, in crisis. And it's interesting hope because you know, when you look at uh, throughout history, civilizations that have been suppressed and oppressed and even, you know, look at Ukraine, some of the stories that were coming out of Ukraine when they were attacked by Russia was that the, the church was rising up in worship. Yeah. And I just have to say, when we are worshiping God, in the midst of trial, yeah. in the midst of uh, conflict and the threat of our lives even, we can find peace that surpasses our understanding. Yeah. That's what the scripture means. And we can find joy in the presence of Almighty God yeah. because it's in it's His glory is manifest. You know, here's another thing. The, the glory of God, I've heard this said that the, the glory, the Shekinah glory. You remember that term, yes. the Shekinah glory is the, in the Hebrew, it's the, like the female form uh, of God that would come in like a mother and wrap itself mm -hmm. around you when, and, and, and lay with you in your dust, in your grief and, and be the healing salve, the healing oil that will, it will just, it, it will gets heal you, you in those. <laughs> it gets you through. It, and, and it's what transforms us, I yeah. believe, because it doesn't rush us. It doesn't rush us through something, but rather it comes there in our human experience to wrap us, to envelop us and to strengthen us and heal us in that season. So in that, 
I'm sure you can attest to this. Oh, when yeah. you were at your bottom, when everything was gone, did you find joy? Oh, my word, Brenda. I, I came to know God so personally at my lowest, mm -hmm. darkest point. He mm -hmm. spoke to me daily. I mean, things would just pop out of the word um, at my lowest point. I'm sta sitting yeah. here losing 23 pounds in 30 days. Um, oh. You know, t clearly I'm healed today, as y'all yeah. can tell. <laughs> but my lowest point, <laughs> I lost 23 <laughs> pounds in 30 days. Oh, but my I, goodness. But Not the, the, word of God, the word of God would pop out to me. But, but I had a job in that. I was pursuing. I, I wasn't running in my lowest. Right. Point. I that's was pursuing good. at my lowest yes. point. And I was like, mm. you're, I can't live without you. I can't get yeah. through this without you. But yes, I felt his presence in ways that I'd never felt it before. Mm -hmm. So so it was very real and tangible to me. So, mm -hmm. you know what, it, it's like David when he, he, he had to conquer the lion before he conquered the bear. Then he had to conquer the bear before he conquered Goliath. So it, was, it fuels you. It gives you fuel yeah. to your faith. For if God mm. got me through this, oh, I know he's going to get me through this. He's already, mm -hmm. I look back over my life. And the testimony of Jesus that he was with me through this. Mm. I know he's going to get me through that. So it, it does. It fuels. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, I can attest to the same thing and, and know that uh, it is important to look back and realize, you know, he got me through this. Yeah. OK, so let's switch gears for a minute here, because I do want to talk about marriage, because there is the, the generation that is so afraid of commitment. Yeah. And they've seen all of our failures and they're like, I don't want to do it that way. Yeah. What did marriage get from my parents or whoever? And. Uh, you know, marriage is not perfect, but we yet those who are getting married are looking for uh, perfection and they want to have the idealistic wedding. I mean, these weddings nowadays and the entourage that takes place. Sometimes I go, oh, my goodness. I mean, the way we did it yeah. was very different. If they would put as much effort into oh. staying married yeah. as they put into yeah. getting married. Come then on. they might have a good marriage. You know, all the money yeah. you spend, but then you offer them a $199 marriage conference and they're like, I wow. can't pay that. But you paid right. $20,000 right. to get married and now you're in a mess. Yeah. You know, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's intentional. No relationship yeah. is is going to grow on its own. You're either mm -hmm. growing or you're dying. And, mm -hmm. and in any area of your, your business, your leadership skills, your relationship with the Lord, your friendships and your marriage. It's either growing mm -hmm. getting better or it's dying. And the only way that it grows and gets better is when you're intentionally managing it. I, I told, I talked to our married, um, couples on the East coast and we're having another one called better me, better we, it's our marriage and our singles event. <clears throat> And I said, you know, you, it's like a kite. Marriage is like a kite. You can either throw it up there and just see where it goes. Or you can hold it and manage it and make it go where you want it to go. So, you know, it, we've seen too many Disney movies. Um, right. It's not Cinderella. And mm -hmm. it, it just it doesn't happen like that. It's, it, it's two humans. Yeah. Two whole, yeah. <laughs> imperfect, mm. selfish, awful, because, stingy humans right. <laughs> trying to live together. Yeah. And really, if you think about it, I mean, this all points back to the, the longing for happiness, the longing to be loved. And wanting but somebody else marriage, to do that for me. That's, that's where I'm going. Exactly. And so that's the biggest I think mistake in marriage is that you put the weight of your happiness on as the responsibility else. on that other person's shoulders. And I think this points back to, and yes, there's, there are things that, Oh yeah, there are responsibilities. Y'all yeah. right. need to take that right. trash out and y'all need to help <laughs> us with these children and back in some time. There you go. Exactly. So that's another like whole show, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, you know, I think it really does point back to us, 
if we don't have that third person in the marriage mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit that is guiding us, giving us wisdom, because we're going to bump into our humanity, yeah. our wounds. We trigger one another in the, it, it, where once, you know, when we were dating and courting, it was all fun and infatuation and because we managed it. one another. We managed yes. it on purpose. I was good on purpose. I dressed up on purpose. Yeah. I wore his favorite perfume on purpose. Yeah. I went to uh -huh. the whole game with him on purpose, <laughs> even when I Good. didn't like it. But we don't do it. Mm -hmm. We stop doing that. We stop managing. Yeah. And just throw and, it out and there. instead, we're focusing on what's wrong. Yeah. Instead of going back to, okay, what's right? And how do I celebrate that? And then inviting the Lord into those things, those places that we feel broken, the places that we feel um, unfulfilled yes. and, and taking that to God and saying, okay, what's wrong here? Why do I feel this way? And yes, maybe my partner is not paying attention to this, but what do you want to say to me here? Yeah. And I think that it's in those kinds of seasons and those experiences, hope that we actually find our joy because the Lord fulfills and teaches us how to find that joy when the rest of the world isn't paying attention yeah. to our inner need. And they're not going to, they, they can't, nobody can possibly be, uh, you know, our the everything. savior for anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Our everything. Yeah. That's really good. Only Jesus so, can satisfy yeah. the longings of our soul. Mm hmm Amen. Yeah. So what do you think? Uh, where are we now? I, I want you to just really encourage a young girl the next 30 seconds, a young girl who's feeling like, you know, I've never seen a relationship that was not abusive or that didn't last. Yeah. And I would like to be loved. But where do I go first? Would you encourage her today? The first thing I would say is um, pursue your wholeness. Pursue your wholeness. The mm -hmm. Bible says to love the Lord God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength, and all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. You can't love your neighbor. You can't love your husband. You can't love a mate. You can't love anybody until you, you figure out the love of mm -hmm. the Father and receive His love. First, you got to pursue Him. you got to love Him. Then you got to learn to love yourself. Then you can love others. And that if you do it out of that step, it's always going to be messed up. Mm. But there is hope. It can yeah. get better. Always, always, yeah. always. Mm. It certainly can. And it did for you. It did. It, it did. did for you. Brenda, I have happiness now. Oh, come on. Yeah. I see it all the time. And I yeah. love that for you. And God is good. And he's a redeemer and a restorer. Yeah. And uh, for, for those who don't know, you have a book called I the do. most beautiful disaster. Yeah. I don't have that with me right now, okay, I'll but <laughs> uh, we can show it on the screen. But you know, uh, if, if you're out there just wondering about identity issues and self-confidence and all those things, go get Hope's book because it's amazing and it will bless you. And Hope, I want to thank you for being with me, my friend. We, we've got to get together in person, I know but it. hey, this is always <laughs> this fun. <is> good. <laughs> thank you, Brenda. <laughs> Thanks for love being you. here. I love you too. And friends, I love you. And uh, I appreciate you taking the time to join in with us and to be encouraged. And I know that you were, and I hope that you will look to Jesus to be the answer for everything that you need. He wants you to find joy and he has a purpose for you. Until next time, I'm Brenda Crouch.